the power. This mag. What's up, family? Too Cool TV is back. Check out some more music on Artist Discovery. I'm gonna round out the month of February with one more artist revisit. I'm gonna check out an artist that I checked out last year as part of, I sure don't know if it was, it probably was part of Friends and Family, woo hoo hoo. And I'm gonna check out John Rizzo. I know personally, worked with him a few times on some different songs. He played the keys and my song ready to go. It's gonna be getting re released uh, soon as a single for my band, Professor T and the Funk Academy. And this is his actual new musical project that he calls Mainstream Commercial Nihilism. I, I don't know what else to say about that name. It's just the most amazing name I've ever heard in my life. If you know the guy, you follow him on social media. It makes complete sense why he would choose a name like that as his project. And the name of the first song that was released for the group Mainstream Commercial Nihilism is called Silent. So let's listen to Silent and let's see if I turn to a nihilist after listening to this song. We're going to break it down together and see how I feel about it. So, silent. I mean, for one thing, the runtime of this song, six minutes, that's a very John Rizzo thing to do. Also, the, the album artwork is great, you know what I mean? You can definitely hear his style right here, too. <coughs> I already know the quality of this work, so I already knew that the instrumental component of this was gonna be absolutely perfect, and like the vocals and everything would be mixed perfect. I get a lot of vibes from the Recluse song that I listened to last year too. I'm still getting like Alter Bridge vibes from this too. I get a little bit of Journey vibes. Bass player was getting it, man. Wait, what's to that bass line? I like how this sounds very thick and lush too, because you got the keys, you got the guitars, you got the bass line, you got the drums that really fill out the mix too, because there's a lot of rack playing on the drums. I wonder if there's a genius.com for him yet. He needs a genius.com. I'm gonna turn my headphones up a little bit more. I'm trying to hear what he's saying. That's why I'm so quiet right now. I'm trying to hear what he's even saying in this stuff without the lyrics. Vocals right here, wow. I like this here, the metering is, has changed. <coughs> you do a slight time signature change, like right? two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. You hear that how the time signature changed right there? So instead of just being one, two, three, four at this way, it's one, two, three, one, two. It's the best way I can put it in layman's terms. <clears throat> I 
That's what I try to do with this. I try to put things in layman's terms because it's also it's for the musicians and producers as well as for just the fans and the music lovers. I try to break it down in layman's terms too. That little vocal part right there is really cool. I like that, how it just kind of fills out with the harmonies right there. <coughs> the guitar player was killing this part. I'm not really talking much through this I'm just trying to take in everything that's going on right now. <clears throat> There's a lot going on here. But at this point, you kind of hear the droning synth come in a little bit more prominent. Just let the guitar, or actually the bass rather, just ring out at the end. That's pretty neat. All right, let's bring it back to me. I like it. I like that, JR. I like it. Hmm. Let's go to the, the part where I break it down and give you my reactions. This one's kind of tough because there's so much like happening. I've heard this a few times. And in fact, this is the second time I'm doing a review because I, I redid all the reviews for February. Just because the first time around they were so trash. But yeah, man, this is like, <clears> there's <throat> just so much going on. I mean, within the song, what we heard, the instrumental was still, believe it or not, with the instrumentation, there was not a ton going on, but the way that each instrument was used, it was like very, it filled out the whole track. This had like a very ethereal tone to it, but at the same time, it also was very dark. Like it's kind of a weird mixture there. It's like, because you know, you have like the droning synths coming in, you got like the piano coming in as a very reverberant sound to it that's kind of filling out all the sonic space within the song. So it's like, the way I would describe it, it's like if you're looking at a picture, this isn't just. Sometimes when you look at a picture, you're just seeing the outline of the photo. Sometimes you're seeing a watercolor painting where you're seeing all the colors in there. And sometimes you're looking at a cartoon where you're seeing the outline filled in with the colors. This is more like a watercolor where you're seeing all of the colors in there at the same time. And it's very detailed. Every part of the every part of the sound is filled up with something happening here. So I think that that's actually a pretty neat little uh, thing here. And that's one of my observations from it. Lyrically, like I said, you need a genius.com, my guy. Because sometimes I don't know what you're talking about with the lyrics. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like I, like, I need, like, a printed out lyric sheet. Because I felt like the lyrics here, they were kind of... The vocals were kind of... They were sitting back in the mix a little bit more. So I wasn't really sure exactly, like, the meaning of all the lyrics because of that. Um, I think that the way that it sounded, too, with the vocals, you have a really cool voice. Like, I'm actually jealous of that. Like, my voice doesn't sound cool like that. My voice is annoying. But you have a cool-sounding voice, like, on the track, so... 
Because I remember that, too, like, when I used to, like, see you more, like, a lot of times, I remember you, like, beat yourself up sometimes over, like, vocals, but I think that the vocals and the singing sounds amazing. So, like, you really are talented at that. So, you know, keep it up. It sounds amazing as far as that goes. Uh, with the guitar sounds, I thought there were some pretty cool and interesting guitar sounds I heard in there. I actually like that. The bass sounded good. Like, the bass player was getting busy. Like, I'm not sure who was playing the bass. Like, there was some cool stuff happening in the bass line there. <clears throat> the drums, like I mentioned, there's a lot of rack, which I actually like that. Lots of cymbals, lots of toms going on. Sounded great. And I like to hear that, because I like to hear... Because sometimes, like, when I review a lot of pop music here, so a lot of times the pop music, it gets kind of boring, because a lot of times the drums are boring. And people don't really switch up the drums a lot. So I like how you did that. This was a good break from, you know, doing a couple of pop songs in a row the last couple of weeks. And, yeah, just overall, the execution of this was pretty flawless, in my opinion. I don't, I didn't really hear anything I would change if I was the producer. Critique section of the review. The only critique I would give, I just wish the vocals were mixed a little bit louder. Because, cause like, I couldn't really, I felt like I wanted to hear it more, what you were saying, and so that way I could kind of get more impact of what it is that you were talking about you know what I mean so I think that this is pretty cool lyricism I mean your group is called mainstream commercial nihilism so I know obviously there's some social commentary that's in this song you know so I that's really the only thing I, I could say I would have liked to hear the vocals be a little bit louder and more present sounding but overall I like the overall tone of how the song sounds I like your choices for the instrumentation I really like how the vocals sounded. I like the the way that it was written. I think the writing is really good. I mean, really, the only other critique I might give you, and this is kind of premature because this is the only song that I see you have up for mainstream commercial nihilism thus far. But to me, in my personal opinion, this is completely 100% subjective and personal. But I just feel that this sounds too much like Recluse. I know it's different but it sounds too much like it because it still is kind of this big grandiose sounding mid-tempo epic of a song you know so that's really my only critique which is completely subjective and if that's what sh what your goals are is to make every song the big masterpiece like that great but my personal subjective opinion that i would put if i was the producer of this group and i was going to do a whole album for you i would like to hear some more variety in the way that you do things like Maybe do some songs that are a little bit faster. You know, maybe do some stuff that's a little bit more stripped down sounding. Some stuff where it's more just the drums and the bass. It doesn't have all the keyboards and the extra, like, very uh, droning sounds. Do some songs that sound a little bit more empty and exposed, you know. So so really, that's why only other critique is just that. And like I said, that's completely subjective. Because if that's not what you want to do, that's fine. But... That's the perspective I come from with my critiques. If I was the one producing, what would I do? Like I said, though, if that's what you guys want to do and that's your sound, and when you guys come out with the album or EP or whatever, you give me, like, the two-hour-long EP full of seven-minute, eight-minute, eleven-minute-long songs that all sound like this, that's cool. But I probably will give it, like, a C-minus grade while I review it over the powersback.com, and that's exactly what my complaint would be. I would say there's not enough variety, and you guys are just showing that you're a one-trick pony. But, like... Like I said, that's completely subjective. Because at this point, this is all my personal opinion. So you can take all that with a grain of salt or just tell me, buzz off, stick to the hip-hop and R&B. I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to progressive rock. Which I'll admit, I don't. Because that's my weakness, and I finally have been comfortable with admitting that. I don't like classic rock, and I don't like progressive rock. As much as I try to listen to it and try to pretend I can get into it, I just can't. I respect it, and it's great to listen to for the lessons you can learn from the production and the songwriting, but like... I just can't get jiggy with classic rock. I can't get jiggy with Pink Floyd. <laughs> Not like I can with, like, the Isley Brothers or, like, Earth, Wind, and Fire. And to me, a lot of their music has a lot of meaning and commentary within it. Like, a lot of Philip Bailey's and Maurice White's lyrics have a lot of social commentary. If you listen to, like, stuff other than just their party music. I think that this band is really cool. And I am excited to hear more of what they do. And... I enjoy these seven minute long songs. I just would have listened to one of them at a time and had a whole EP. So that's my entire point. So now we're gonna go and put it on the Billboard chart. 
I know the video is kind of long, but it's a longer song, so I give myself two more minutes. So on the chart, there's only four songs on the chart, so don't take this personal. That's the bottom. But hey, you're still in the top five. You're number four. It's just that these songs are so completely different. It's hard for me to actually compare them against each other. So right now, just kind of going off of a feel thing, because as I uh, you say last year, I forgot to say that for the other few this year, the Billboard chart is not a reflection of the quality of the song. This is a chart of recommendations I'll give out at the end of the year. It's put in order of what I think people would like the most. So right now, this is number four from right now. Honestly, it could go either way. I mean, thinking about it a little bit more, I might would put it at number three. I mean, I can right now. because so I think maybe this song is actually a little bit better executed than um, <clears throat> the, uh, Christy K's song was. It's not necessarily that her song was any worse. It's just I feel like the execution is better. And if people were playing this, they might prefer the way that this song sounds over that one. But that one is a pop song, of course, so it's totally different. And it's just a little bit below Beautiful Disguise and the Hanging Bandits. Uh, the Boxer Waits His Turn. And the JR, because I already know you're going to check into this video. First of all, go hard on me in the comments. I want the smoke. I want you to criticize me for criticizing your group. I want your, I want you to defend yourself hard as possible. And second of all, so John, check out the Suburban, uh, I mean, rather, the Hanging Bandits. The Boxer Waits His Turn and the one I reviewed last year, the Suburban Ghost. I think you would like their music. Their music is very poetic and uh, has a lot of commentary as well. So I think you would enjoy that. They just have a little different flavor than you do because they are more they do more folk music and a rock type of sound. So I just put theirs a little bit higher because I think their song is a little more accessible like I used the word last year when I reviewed yours. It's a little bit more simple, you know, it'll, um, I just thought it came out slightly better than this one. Not, it's not that it's better, just in terms of recommending to others think people like that one a little better than they will this one. So, that's my review. Now, a little bit over my time, a little bit. Like I said, this is a little bit longer song, and I also rambled on for a long time. So, let's bring it back to me. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So, good work to uh, John Rizzo and this new group, the mainstream commercial nihilism. I love the name. I think this is a great song. Can't wait to see what else you guys decide to do. And, um, really cool. So, to... John Rizzo personally, the mainstream commercial nihilism and whoever else is involved with this group. To all you guys, fans, and everybody watching at home, love what you do. I enjoyed listening to this song and I hope that all of you did too. Spread nothing but peace and love to all of you. And I will see you in the next review. The power is back.